Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I'm back. I haven't made one of these videos in, ooh, a couple of years, I guess, since the S22 series, but I am back, and so is Exynos. Because here in the UK and Europe, and I think pretty much everywhere outside of the US, the regular S24 and the S24 Plus use the Exynos 2400, but the Ultra gets the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 globally, everywhere. However, in the US, all S24 models use the Snapdragon. And the problem is, historically, the Exynos chip just hasn't been as good as the Snapdragon. It did get pretty close, but generally it's been slower, worse for battery life, worse for the camera, and we just had to live with it because of, I don't know, money and patents and Qualcomm and Samsung deals. Now, unlike previous years where I'd be comparing an Ultra with an Ultra, but with different chips, obviously these are different models in the lineup. This is like 250 pounds more expensive, 1250 versus 999. So this does have a better camera system and it has a slightly bigger battery and also a bigger vapor chamber cooler. So there are some differences, but apart from that, Samsung tell me performance should be comparable and that the different chips shouldn't have any effect on the new AI features. Everything is available on both. So let's see. And to be clear, both of these are retail models. They have the latest software as of, well, this date as I'm filming. So let's jump straight in with the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. This is a 20 minute, very intensive, graphically demanding benchmark. And by the end of it, we'll see a high score, a low score, and also a stability rating, because obviously throttling is a big question as well. How is the sustained performance? And the results, uh, a little bit disappointing actually for the Exynos. We're looking at about a 20% higher peak score and a 15%-ish higher low score, although actually identical stability ratings. And scrolling down, the Plus used 12% of its battery versus 10% on the Ultra, although it does have a slightly bigger battery. Similar temperatures overall, but look at that peak FPS with the frame rate, 37 versus 32. Hmm. But both these chips also claim to be much faster at ray tracing graphics, although there's really only a handful of games that support ray tracing, and even then, like, War Thunder it doesn't actually make that much difference. But, you know, going forward, it's worth knowing. And after the Solar Bay stress test, again, another 20-minute, very demanding test, the results are actually much closer. The S24 Ultra does still come out in front for both the best and the lowest score, and also just a little bit higher in terms of stability. So this is a bit more reassuring that actually there isn't a lot between them. But again, two out of two so far, the Snapdragon version is taking the lead. Just quickly though, if I go into the Geekbench device menu settings thing here, uh, you can see that the Snapdragon is actually an eight core chip, whereas the Exynos is a 10 core chip. All of the architectures and the design are quite different. And also both these phones have 12 gigs of RAM and 256 storage. And we're looking at, I'd say within the margin of error or like, you know, no more than one or 2% difference in a single core and about 4% faster in multi-core. So not much in it there, but three for three, Snapdragon's winning. That is until we run the OpenCL test, which is a graphics test within Geekbench. And here, for the first time, we have an Exynos victory, 16,000 versus 15,000. Okay, last synthetic benchmark before we move on to some more real world tests. And if I fire up Antutu uh, and then fast forward because this will take forever and I don't want to bore you all to death, the results, Snapdragon wins again, 1.82 million versus 1.73. But unless you're a tech nerd making videos like this, chances are you're not spending a whole lot of your time benchmarking your phone. So what about a more real world performance test? Well, let's try a video export test. And if I fire up Premiere Rush, I've got a one minute 4K60 video shot on each phone, and I'm just gonna export it and see how long it takes. Got my little iPhone timer there, and actually right out of the gate, the Snapdragon on the Ultra does seem to be speeding up the export quite a bit faster. And jumping to the end, holy moly, that is a massive difference. It took nearly, no, over three times as long on the Exynos S24 Plus than the Snapdragon Ultra. That's really not good. I feel like maybe that's an anomaly. Let's just restart that. Yeah, it's taking the lead again. It looks like it's already three times faster. Actually, I wanna pause that test there because for some reason, the S24 Plus is just slowed right down to a crawl, it's chugging. I, I can't remember the last time I've experienced a phone like this. Not sure what's going on with that. S24 Ultra is fine. I think we'll just have to restart the phone and hopefully it fixes it because I've not experienced that kind of slowdown before. Okay, fresh restarts. The phones now appear to be as quick as each other in just day-to-day -day swiping and you know home stuff. That's fine. Let's jump back into Premiere Rush, see if there just was some performance issue there and actually it's closer. And the answer is no. 
<laughs> in fact, it performs worse. I suspect this is just a Snapdragon optimization thing because the ubiquity of these Snapdragon chips, we've had them for years and they work very close with developers, is that they can be more optimized for it. Whereas we have a few Exynos chips every now and then for a handful of phones. And I mean, I know there's some millions of them, but it's not nearly as universal as the Snapdragon chips. So this could improve with an update from either Samsung for the phone or uh, Adobe for Premiere Rush. But at the moment, yeah, that's not good. Let's play a bit of War Thunder. I like this because it's a pretty demanding game. There's a ray tracing option and it tells me the FPS. And immediately without ray tracing, but max out settings, both phones can comfortably hit that 120 FPS. Um, although within a couple of minutes, I do find the frame rates drop a fair amount on both. And actually the Exynos chip in the Plus does seem to be doing better, like a good five to 10 FPS better. Now, if I turn on ray tracing, which honestly I wouldn't because it makes very little visual difference, I have to say, and it does impact the frame rate. This is actually the first time we're seeing the Exynos chip come into its own. And interestingly, it was also the Solar Bay 3D Mark test, which incorporated ray tracing, where we saw that first win for the Exynos chip as well. So in War Thunder, at least, particularly if you are gonna use ray tracing, I'm gonna call this a win for the S24 plus with the Exynos. However, if I flip them over and then grab my very disgusting but trusty laser thermometer, just in terms of the external surface temperature, we're looking at about a three degree higher temp on the plus versus the ultra. So in War Thunder, the Exynos wins. In PUBG, performance is similar, same graphics options as well so far. But obviously I can't test every game out there and there will be some differences. So it's gonna depend on the game you play. But suddenly they're both extremely powerful processors with very fast graphics. But what about all those AI features? That's like one of the big deals obviously within US 24 range. Is there a difference in AI? Obviously Snapdragon's going on about the MPU they have in the chip this year and how much faster it is. But then Samsung are also saying that the majority if not all these features will be going back to the S23 as well. So I'm not quite sure how that makes it an exclusive uh, feature of these new phones and how you know the new chips unlock it. But either way, I have good news because every AI feature, at least the half a dozen or so that I've tested from instant slow-mo and the AI photos and the gen fill and the transcribe and the summarize, all present and correct on both and performance seems to be neck and neck. So in terms of those AI features for both the camera and everything else, everything seems to run just fine, equally well on both chips, which is good news. But the last thing I want to note is that the S24 Plus has used more battery. Like it's nearly 10 percentage points lower, which is a lot given that the S24 Plus has a 4,900 million power battery versus 5,000. So where does that leave us? Well, it doesn't really leave you anywhere because you haven't got a choice. If you do not live in the US and you are buying yourself an S24 or a Plus, then you will have an Exynos chip uh, unless you smuggle in from the US, but then there may be different uh, 5G bands. Probably wouldn't recommend it. I think overall, the Snapdragon is the slightly superior chip uh, and also kind of makes sense from a marketing standpoint that they put that in the Ultra globally, whereas the Exynos is in the inferior plus and regular S24. So that kind of makes sense, although a bit weird, especially in the US, how they get Snapdragon on all the phones. So I feel like a tiny bit shortchanged uh, getting an Exynos here in the UK. I would still definitely consider buying the S24 Plus because it's like 250 pounds cheaper. And while I'm not gonna compare the cameras in this video because this has a 50 megapixel camera with a uh, much smaller sensor than the Ultra's 200 megapixel camera, so that's never gonna be the same. And on the one hand, it is impressive that Samsung with their Exynos chip have pretty much caught up to Snapdragon and this is like all they do. So, you know, the team at Exynos, the uh, graphics in particular, good job, you're getting close. But what do you think? Is this a big deal? Could you care less? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you do have an S24 or a Plus or an Ultra so far, let me know your experiences in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, a like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.